So it's a very special and very New Jersey kind of day. It's middle of November and it's in the 70 degree Fahrenheit range. So I want to take advantage of that before the winter really hits and fix an issue with my Honda Ridgeline. And uh, that is repair this back uh, fender that has a bunch of rust. And this is very common, especially with trucks. A um, bunch of rust that built up. Basically, you get a rock chip or something that just chips the paint and then rust starts to develop in that fender. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, trying to avoid a $1,000 plus job. I got quoted about uh, $1,200 to fix this at a body shop with $80 worth of supplies here. So what I have is some reinforced Bondo. I have um, color matched paint. I have uh, clear coat and I have some undercoating from Rust-Oleum just to stop the rust on the inside of the fender. Um, got my spreading squeegees here and some metal mesh in case I need it in case there's a big rusted out area and sent then some prep materials. I got my tack cloth and uh, some glazing putty just for the final touches before we paint it. Of course I have other sanding supplies and that kind of thing and I'll bring it along with the process. So let me give you a closer look here. Um, you can see the entire, almost the entire rim of the fender here has been rusted. Uh, this is probably the worst spot right here. Uh, now, Body Shop would probably suggest cutting a piece of this out and replacing, welding in a new piece of metal and then uh, blending it with the rest of the body. But I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Um, and actually, it's not that bad. There isn't like a huge panel that's rusted completely. I can't put my, this, this material is still pretty strong. Um, so basically, I might put a piece of mesh metal right here and then a bunch of uh, reinforced Bondo in there and straighten it out. Okay, I'm gonna start by just prepping the, the area, seeing what I have to remove. I think I'm gonna take out the inner fender um, and there's like a plastic liner that goes along this fender here and I take that off. Let's go from there. So I decided I'm going to take the wheel off just to give myself a little more room to work. Okay, now that the wheel is off, I can get a little bit better view. I just had a few body um, snaps in here holding it in place and a few screws. Took a couple of screws out. This is the last one that I couldn't actually reach it without getting the tire off. So just finish that up. In case you're doing this on your ridge line, there's another body snap right under here. Oh, one more. That was a tough one to get out. In case you've never seen one before, basically there's a plastic screw looking thing and there's an insert and that insert pops open these claws on the inside. All you gotta do is put a screwdriver in between the two and turn it. The top part, that insert pops out, you can pull it right out. All right, let's see what we got going on back here. There's no rust on the inside of this panel here, which is nice. Uh, there might be some, you know, up behind it, but I think we're okay to just sand down. Honestly, I feel like I caught this pretty early. I'm gonna go at it a little bit harder with a 60 grit. I might hit it with a wire brush. Um, get all this rust off.
All right, I've done enough sanding to start off with. And uh, one thing I found is that actually this was repaired before. There's a bunch of body filler in there. Uh, doesn't seem like it was done super professionally, so probably the previous owner might have done it. I'm not going for perfect, so I don't really mind. So the other thing I just want to start doing is start preparing these, uh, this edge here to get it nice and flat it's a little bit wavy you can probably tell like it dips down goes back up I want to get it nice and even and then uh, yeah remove whatever metal that I need to remove um, so that the rust doesn't start growing again and then I'm gonna spray a rust killer on there let it sit for a little bit clean it off uh, and then probably start bonding it pretty soon So as I, as I was going here, I realized there's another area with some bubbles of rust right underneath the door here. So I'm gonna take care of that while we're at it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is actually spray on some of this rust dissolver. Uh, Rust-Oleum makes this. Let it sit on there on the rusted areas for about 15, 30 minutes. And uh, then we'll come back, clean it off, and then prep the surface for Bondo. All right, so that rust gel has been sitting for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna wash it off and start prepping for some Bondo. So I washed off the gel and uh, I'm washing it all with this TSP. Um, which is really good for clearing a surface before you paint it. Um, I have it watered down in my spray bottle here. And just cleaning it all up and I'm trying to blow all the liquid out before I uh, put on some primer. Um, and what I'm going to use this primer is actually uh, this Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. It's paint, dries really quickly, and I'm going to spray everything down with it. Um, basically, I'm making every attempt to get rid of the rust and have it never come back. All right, it's all prepped. I sanded around the, the uh, surface of the area I'm going to be working on with a 220 grit, just lightly, so the primer sticks really well. And now I'm just going to hit it with the primer and let that dry. All right, so the primer is dry. I'm gonna lightly sand it again with uh, 220 grit, and then uh, that'll have some teeth for the Bondo to adhere to. All right, you can see it's got some grit to it. Uh, that's what you need for the Bondo to adhere to the surface. Either that, or you sand it all the way down to the bare metal. But no matter what, it has to be sanded. So now what I'm gonna do is actually use some of this wire mesh to rebuild some of these rusted out holes here. So there's a big gap here and there's, uh, there's one up here. So the Bondo, the Bondo is probably strong enough to just create that rigid um, uh, line right there anyway, but that wire mesh is just going to make it that much stronger. All right, time for body filler. Okay, you can see this is fiber reinforced. It's got fibers inside the, uh, the Bondo. You gotta move quick with this stuff. So you mix up small batches because it hardens really quickly.
All right, so I'm done with the fiber reinforced uh, Bondo. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then I'll sand it down and finish it off with uh, some glazing putty. All right, I finished the heavy sanding to get all the surfaces pretty much flat. Now I'm gonna go with some glazing putty, fill in the divots and get that nice finished flatness before I paint it. So first I'm gonna go over it with a tack cloth to make sure everything is nice and clean. Dust is removed so the glazing putty sticks. Alright, so the glazing putty is pretty much all dry. I think I have it the way I want it. Um, now I'm going to sand it down. This part is a lot more delicate, so I'm not going to use the Dremel. I'm going to actually go by hand to the sanding block. I'm going to start with a 220 grit. I'll work my way up to probably 400, 600, and then maybe even a 1200 before I actually paint it. All right, after the first sanding with the 220 grit, you can see there's still a bunch of little divots and things in here. So I'm gonna do one more round of glazing putty, and then that will be the final one before we prep for paint. All right, all the sanding is done. Now I'm just gonna clean it up. I went all the way to a 600 grit sandpaper, and now I'm gonna clean it up and prep it for paint. So I'm trying to get all the dust off, uh, wax and grease remove, make sure it's really clean. And then I'm gonna use a tack cloth. Uh, well, first I'll tape it off. And actually what I'm gonna do is try to fade the paint a little bit, uh, cause I don't want any sharp tape lines. There aren't any like corners or anything where I can tape it off perfectly and then nobody will notice. So I gotta really gently taper the paint. All right, so what I've done here is try to create some soft edges. And uh, the one part that I'm a little bit worried about is right here in this corner. Um, but basically the process, as you probably saw me do it, is you decide where you want to put the paper, where you want to block off, and then tape your paper down and then curl it back up creating kind of a tube effect in the back there. So there's no s solid tape line anywhere. Otherwise you're gonna get a harsh line where the old paint meets the new paint. I did tape off the gas cap completely because that has a clear differentiation uh, between old paint and new paint. So that, that line, I don't care if it's uh, harsh. Uh, taped off the door and I think we're just about ready to go. I'm gonna clean it one more time, tack cloth it, and then spray it in. Primer. All right, coat number one. While we wait, so my technique is I always start the spray on this piece of cardboard. That way I don't get a buildup along the, the starting point of my line of spray. So I start on the cardboard and then I fan it out and end out in the air. 
That's my attempt to not get any drifts or excess paint in any areas. Code number three. All right, so that's my final coat of color. Looking pretty good. So we're gonna let that sit for about 30 minutes and then spray it with clear. All right, time for clear. I'm gonna do one or two coats and then see if we need a third. Coat number two. All right, this will be coat number three. Might even do four, maybe more, we'll see. All right, this will be the fourth and final coat for the night. Come back and look at it in the sunlight. If I feel like it needs a little correction, we can take care of that then. All right, I'll let that dry for a few minutes and then take the paper off before it dries completely. All right, so it's the next day. Looking at it in the daylight, here's our paint job. Um, there's a pretty clear distinction here between the old paint and the new. See the clear coat where it meets there. It's not a really dead straight line, so I'm happy about that. Um, but this clear coat, all the paint, as to be expected with a rattle can, I suppose, it's a lot of what you would call orange peel or texture. It's very bumpy. Um, and it also looks very hazy. It doesn't look like a nice, clear, polished finish. So what I'm going to be doing is what you call a cut and polish. Um, I'm actually going to be going at it with a 1200 grit sandpaper, then a 1500, then a 2000. And then I will uh, hit it with a compound to take out some of those scratches from the sandpaper and then polish it and see how that turns out. So what I'm going to do is wet sand. That I have a special sandpaper that can be used wet or dry. I have a bucket of warm water here. I'm going to wet the sandpaper and the surface that I'm going to sand. So I'm keeping it nice and wet and I'm cleaning off the sandpaper really regularly and just feeling the surface to see when the texture starts to go away and it gets really flat. I don't want to eat through the clear coat. I definitely don't want to eat through the paint, so I'm being really gentle with it. All right, so I hit it with the 1200, now I'm gonna go 1500. All right, finished with the whole sanding process there. Um, took it down to 2000. I'm not a pro, but I think this is gonna be just fine for me. So now I'm gonna prep the uh, buffer that I have here I'm using a medium grit uh, pad. And I'm gonna use my rubbing compound first. So put a little bit of that on and then slowly work it in and increase the speed with this pad. And then we'll switch over to the finishing pad and polishing compound. So just put four drops on the pad to start with and then put it on the car. I'm going to hit it with the final step, that's the polish, clean it off, see how we do. Definitely it could be better, but honestly I'm okay with how it is right now. Um, if in the future I want to really perfect it, I'll 
probably uh, fix some of the clear coat. Some of it I didn't spray enough, maybe. Also, there's still some texture, some orange peel, so I could sand it down a little bit better. Um, but I'm happy with it as it is. And I think that's going to be a wrap for the time being. Honestly, it looks a hundred times better. I know uh, could be could be a little bit better, but I'm very happy with how that turned out. All right, so that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Do something else next time. See ya.